Hi everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how I coloured this dark skin tone using lavender as a base. Uh, this one was from Pouring Heaven Alice in Wonderland special by Eva Nikunin. And the image I'm going to be using to show you is this one, which is from another Coloring Heaven. This is from Fantasy Figures special Coloring Heaven by Maud Lemoyne. So I'll zoom us in and we'll get started. So the idea of using purple as a base for a dark skin tone, I actually found on a video by Lisa Mitrokin, Mitrokin however you say it. And um, the pencils that she used were Black Widows with some polychromos towards the end and maybe a I think there was a Prismacolor at the end as well, but I don't have any of those. So I kind of took the idea and I simplified it a little bit and I used, chose the pencils that I already had. So the ones I'm using are Castle Arts and not as many colours as she used because as I said I simplified it a bit but these are the ones that I used. It's Ivory Black 071, Burnt Umber 063, Lavender 036 and Van Dyke Brown 069. I've also got my white polychromos and I have purple light. I've never tried it before but I'm going to try and use that to give it the little blushy cheeks that I like to use. So here we go and for a start I'll put, lay down the purple, the lavender, very lightly and try and give a pretty smooth, smooth covering. The purple will be showing more in the kind of highlighted areas, which I will blend a bit with the whites I'm thinking. So hopefully this will look a lot smoother by then. I'm going to cover most of her face, but I'm going to try and leave a bit of highlight on her cheek. Just for easiness, I'm going to try and have my light coming in from the from the right, top right or middle right, I haven't quite decided yet, but yeah, from the right, so that we can highlight the edges of her face. So I'm trying to leave a bit of highlight down the, down the front of her nose, her cheekbone. would be dark there in our eye socket kind of area. There we go, just making sure we've got a light purple area over most of her face. I'll just use her face to show you and maybe I'll complete the rest and leave kind of tag it on the end as, as a sort of speed colour or something but I thought this was a really cool kind of face to show you this effect with. And I will link Lisa Matrokin's video down in the bottom in the description below in case any of you are interested in going to watch that I would rather do this with Black Widows <laughs> but as I said I just took the general idea and basically ran with it because I didn't have any of the pencils that she was using so being who I am and liking to experiment I tried out the pencils I did have and this is the combination I came up with that it works for me so but feel free to do your own little experiments with it and see if you can find something that works even better for you. I'll go down onto her neck as well. It seems to be a natural kind of break there where her necklace comes in. So I'll just shade down there to the bottom. I've tried to leave my usual little highlight along the edge of her jawline there as well. I find that helps to, for faces to stand out against the background. There we go, I'm not sure if you can actually see that on film, but we do have our nice layer of purple there now. And the next colour I move on to is Van Dyke Brown. And this would be for um, starting to build up the kind of shadow areas. Still going very light because because we want to try and use the layers to try and build in that purple colour as we go. We can come back in with it a little bit later. So hopefully then it might be a little bit easier to see, but it is there now. And we're building up our shadows. We don't want 
tons and tons of this purple showing. It's going to be mainly around the areas where we have our highlights. And we can work back into that and blend the purple in slightly better. But just to try and get our layers starting to be working up there, and leaving that highlighter on the cheekbone to show that our light will be coming from the right. It should hopefully be starting to show up on camera slightly better now. Maybe if I turn the light off, does that make it better? <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do this with the light off. And leaving that highlight around the area of her jaw there. We forgot the insides of the earrings. I'm always forgetting little bits. <laughs> it's a good job you can always get back. And into that on top of the Van Dyke brown. To give it the same light as they are on the rest of the face. There we go. My next darkest shade on top of that is the Burnt Umber 063. And these are for the very darkest shadows. And this is slightly grayscale, so you can see where the darkest shadows would actually be. Should be around her eye socket. I imagine down the side of her nose. Gonna keep an eye on that highlight on her forehead in the middle of her forehead there because that would that would be where that light would be hitting it but i'll probably bring that in a little bit closer to the edge this part of her cheek would be in the dark yes i always forget the ears there's one of the little bits that i need to That would be a very darkest in there, and there is. Right, I think I might start to come in with this purple a little bit more, especially around the edges where these highlights are to be. I'm trying to blend that out into the white. Okay, so whole process is all about layers, so we're going to go back in with the Van Dyke brown now. It's building up the colour.
and give us some nice prominent cheekbones and shadow in there underneath it. Okay, let's try and put this light purple in for a little bit of blush. I have no idea if this will work. <laughs> yeah, I think that's working okay. Blending that with a white a little bit further on, I think, but yeah, it seems to be working okay for a, for a blush colour. Back to the dyke brown. is burnt up. I'm going to bring in the last colour now, which is the ivory black, because the paper's starting to get pretty full up. The teeth are starting to get pretty full up. I don't think there's many more layers that can we can have going on there. So yeah, usually I don't use black on skin <laughs> very much at all, but yeah, um, from the original video. She just described that this works, that it works because there's already so many layers of the brown and the black underneath that the black doesn't look so kind of dead. It just works as the darkest shade on your skin tone, so. And it does, it does seem to work. Just concentrating on this area at the, at the top area we're ahead at the moment. Just so I can see how all these layers are all working together. Actually, I don't use this many layers, but I'm trying to see just how kind of burnished we can make this.
the lavender. I'm going to go back to the lavender. blending out those edges with um, this is not white polychromes one of the few that I do have and that has actually worked with oh This is Van Dyke Brown, just having, I'm seeing if I can put any more layers on top of that white now I've burnished. And Van Tumba. The edges around her hair are slightly messy if you can see there, but I would be doing that with the marker base and working on top anyway. I can always erase it and tidy it up before I do that. But yeah, don't worry about that at all. for her cheeks just to try and add a more pinky tinge to that brown we've got going on
There we go. I'm probably going to leave it like that for today, finish off the rest off camera. But hopefully there I showed you the process of actually creating this same kind of dark skin tone using those colours. This one has a lot this one has a lot brighter highlights going on around the edge of her face, but I just thought that would um that would work pretty well to actually show you how the colours work together. This one has a more more subtle kind of lighting effect going on there on that one not quite so much highlights but I thought I'd be a bit more dramatic on this one just to show you the process and uh, obviously you don't have to leave the highlights as bright white as that or um, you can make your light a little more subtle but I think it's working quite well for this one especially she's put in this kind of tropical setting so the light the sunlight is there shining on her face I will link in the description below the original video from Lisa Madrokin from where I got the idea to use this purple as a colour for colouring dark skin. Um, I've stuck with the same four colours right the way through except for, for her eyes I brought in a couple of our teaser pencils. I think this one is Burnt Ochre I think and I th it, this one is Smoke Grey but my colours have worn off. Um, the numbers have worn off there on the end, so that's a guess. I will try and look them up and see what they are. I, I know this one is burnt ochre. Not sure on the grey. I think it's smoke grey. But those were just for her eyes. So for her skin, for her skin, I'll just refresh, refresh our memories on the colours. We've got uh, Castle Arts Lavender 036, Ivory Black 071, Van Dyke Brown 069 and Burnt Umber 063. And I've kept the same colours throughout, just layering them on to get the kind of deep tones going on there. I blended it with a polychromos white. You don't need to do that at all. If you're happy how it is, leave it how it is. You could use a blender pencil or your solvents, whatever you use to blend your pencils, or you could just leave it as is. It's entirely up to you, but I just thought I'd show you the process that I used to colour my dark skin tone. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed watching that. Take care, everyone. See you in future videos. Bye.